Well, welcome everybody. This is Cameron Dunn, Chris Steele for Live, Sale, Die for the final day of the Prada Cup Finals here in Auckland. Chris, an absolutely dominant performance by Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli today, wrapping up the Series 7-1. You can see over in the background here behind us, the party started. They're off to the America's Cup. Well and truly started, hasn't it? I mean, it's all happening down here in the Viaduct. Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli, you know, putting on a dominant performance today, like you said, Cam. They needed to, to execute and execute well, and you know the first race you got to hand it. The Brits sort of won the start, but a little bit of a compromised position because they weren't really able to control the first part, and uh, the Italians hung tight, sort of on their windward hip, and took them all the way to the boundary, and then simultaneously tacked. And from there we saw, you know, just how high that Italian boat is sailing upwind, and those conditions are just really, really impressive performance. Yeah, it was it was amazing today. I thought the the performance of the Lunarossa boat upwind. Was, came to the fore today. It hasn't been that dominant all the event. We know it's fast, but today, man, poor old uh, Ben Ainsley with Ineos Team UK, they didn't really stand a chance. Off that first start line, they would have felt really strong. I think most of us were expecting Luna Rossa to have to peel off halfway out to the ley line there, but they hung and hung and hung. And then after that tack, as soon as they completed the tack, it was like, oof. Oh, yeah. It's going to be tough. And, you know, we should touch on, obviously, Jimmy and Keiko talked after the race about the, the equipment, you know, decisions that were made. Sort of sounds like Pietro Savello had a pretty um, pretty critical input to some something to do with the mainsail. I'm not entirely sure what it was, but uh, whether they had, you know, potentially the, the chance to change mainsails at the last minute, and, and they did, I'm not sure, but um, they, they gave a lot of credit to that. And then also they mentioned the jib selection in race one. They went with a bigger jib, and so... You know, I think to my knowledge, that's probably Pierre Luigi De Felice's call to, to decide which jib he's going to be trimming. And, and they went for a bigger jib than the Brits, and that certainly looked to be the difference in the first race anyway. But, you know, the second race, uh, a really interesting pre-start. I think the Brits did everything they needed to do. They were aggressive. And they put themselves in a, in a spot where, you know, it was, it was a lot of time to kill, a uh, bit of a tight spot. But at least the, the control was in their own hands. They took the initiative off the Italians, led back. Um, and then, you know, they, they executed really nicely and there was a bit of a dicey moment down there at the pinning of the line where the Brits were trying to scrub time off. They went for a really aggressive, you know, tack on the port to try and cross in front. Looked like the Italians almost had a piece and uh, in doing so they ducked behind and then ended up over the start line. So the Brits got control of their race yeah. early, which is what they needed. But unfortunately, the boats being out of phase, it was hard for the Brits to, you know, get, get themselves in front of the, the Italians and make life harder for them for their... Yeah, I think, you know, as we say here in New Zealand, full credit to, to Ben Ainsley and the Ineos team today. They did what they needed to do. They, they got aggressive in the start. You know, you know as you say, you'd, yeah, they got a nice start. I think and, and with even boats, for sure, they would, have, they would have dominated that first part of that first race off that tight to lured start. But unfortunately, you know, as we've, and we've picked that up pretty clearly from Ben in the press conferences in the last few days is they're not sailing an even boat. Um, and you know, in that last race, yeah, they won the start, they got the first cross. First time in about 12 races, we've seen the first cross not complete to win the race. You know, Luna Rossa, just a superior speed and flawless execution around the course. You know, one shaky tack, but other than that, man, they sailed a fantastic regatta and now they'll be, they'll have a good party tonight but I'm sure from uh, maybe a day off tomorrow with a few sore heads. But after that, they'll be fully focused on uh, our, our friends over here in Emirates Team New Zealand. Yeah, it's a fine line, isn't it? Because obviously you enjoy this. It's a massive accomplishment to come out of the Challenger Series as the top you know, contender to win the Prada Cup, earn the right to challenge Emirates Team New Zealand to, to race for the America's Cup. Um, but yeah, like you said, you know, enjoy this tonight, but very much so you, your focus is going to switch very quickly to you know, how you beat the Kiwi boat. And we've heard... You know, a lot of sort of rumours about the new, new equipment, the new foils that the Kiwis are running. It seems like a, a really strong package. Uh, what we have seen with the Italians is the boat performs very, very well in the lighter airs. And, you know, they might be competitive with the Kiwis in that sort of wind range. Uh, but in and, and, and saying that as well, you know, they've, they've done a lot of work in the last couple of weeks to improve the performance of the boat in the moderate to sort of heavy airs. And I think, you know, if we looked at... And his Team UK was one of the benchmark teams in those sort of conditions. Yeah. The Italians have found a way to close the gap and be competitive in those conditions. So it'll be really interesting to see where they line up uh, in a couple of weeks' time when we come back for the oh, America's Cup. 100%. Watching today's performance, Team New Zealand will be looking at that very, very carefully.
Yeah. So that was a, a very good performance. And they obviously were, were out on the racetrack mm. straight after the conclusion of yep. the Prada Cup final. Same course, trying to sail around. Yep. What do you think is going on there? Do you think they're trying to recalibrate the, the software and the systems, make sure all their race technology is working? Or do you think uh, it's more direct trying to figure out where they think they're going to line up against these I other teams? I think they'll be collecting data, for sure. They're getting all the data from the, from the challenges coming off the boat, the data that's coming off that, that's available to all of us. They can go around and, and put that into their system and try and figure out how the performance going on the boat, and that's probably one of the advantages they have. You know, it's a big disadvantage not being in this racing and, and getting tuned up like that. But they'll be, uh, yeah, they'll, they'll be getting as much out of it as they can. It's a smart move. You know, I'd just like to touch a little bit on Ineos Team UK. Obviously, sad to see them go, um, but in the end of the day, I think there's got to be some pretty big questions asked in that campaign. You know, to, to show up to a to the finals of the Prada Cup and really not have the package to even really compete against your opponent. It's an incredibly disappointing situation to have them in. Um, and so they'll be, you know, I know it'll be gutting for them now, but there's going to be some really deep and dark conversations going on within that organisation moving forward. Let's hope we see them again. I've got a good feeling that they'll be back. But I think you'll see some pretty good changes there as well because they can't make that mistake again. Yeah, I mean, you touched on it. I think obviously a little bit, uh, a lot of disappointment today and, and obviously throughout the, the Prada Cup final series. But I think you've got to give a lot of credit to the team as well for, you know, a, a month or so ago we were talking about this team as, you know, there were people that were riding them off. You know, they, they yeah. were struggling to get on the foils and under the 10 knots and, and you know, they didn't win a single race in the, in the World Series. And then to go through the, the round robin undefeated was a massive turnaround. So, you know, clearly a lot of fighters in that team. There's, there's a lot of good stuff in there as well. Like you said, they'll have to, you know, ask some tough questions and figure out what they could have done better and, and where they might have gone wrong. Yeah, but, there's, there's a lot of fighters and that's all well and good. But at the end of the day, they came up really, really short. You yeah. know, and that goes back to decisions made a long time ago. And, and uh, you know, they, they're just going to have to really you know, reevaluate where they and why they made those mistakes. But hey, that's in the past. I'm really excited about what's going to happen in two weeks' time between Emirates Team New Zealand over here and and Luna Rossa. I think if we get the predominant breeze, we're going to have a cracker in America's Cup. Fantastico! Fantastico! È bellissimo! È bellissimo! We are different, Australian and Italians, very different. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, just lastly from us, big congratulations to Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli team. Our condolences go to NES Team UK and all the British fans. You know, they put up a, a good fight and, and they've accomplished some big things here in New Zealand and we wish them all the best, hopefully, for the future. Uh, for us, that's all for now. So, big thanks to all our sponsors and supporters for looking after everyone here at Live, Sail, Die. And we look forward to bringing you guys more action for the America's Cup in a couple of weeks' time.